Welcome learners. In the previous session, I had started the unit gender stratification in tribal society. I had discussed the meaning of gender and stratification and explained the concept of gender and stratification in the context of tribal societies. In today's session, I will explain the nature of class stratification. I will also explain the concept of gender, class, caste and stratification in the context of tribal societies. Before proceeding further, let me discuss about class. The class system is a universal phenomena denoting a category or group of persons having a definite status in society which permanently determines their relation to other groups. The social classes are de facto groups that is not legally or religiously defined and sanctioned. They are relatively open, not closed. Their basis is indisputably economic, but they are more than economic groups. They are characteristic groups of the industrial societies, which have developed since 17th century. The relative importance and definition of membership in a particular class differs greatly over time and between societies, particularly in societies that have a legal differentiation of groups of people by birth or occupation. In the well-known example of socioeconomic class, many scholars view societies as stratifying into a hierarchical system based on occupation, economic status, wealth or income. According to Ogburn and Nimkov, a social class is the aggregate of persons having essentially the same social status in a given society. Marx defined class in terms of the extent to which an individual or social group has control over the means of production. In Marxist terms, a class is a group of people defined by their relationship to the means of production. Classes are seen to have their origin in the division of the social product into a necessary product and a surplus product. Marxists explain history in terms of a war of classes between those who control production and those who actually produce the goods or services in society, that is, also developments in technology and the like. In the Marxist view of capitalism, this is a conflict between capitalists who are the bourgeoisie and the wage workers, that is the proletariat. Class antagonism is rooted in the situation that control over social production necessarily entails control over the class which produces goods. In capitalism, this is the exploitation of workers by the bourgeoisie. Marx saw class categories as defined by continuing historical processes. Classes in Marxism are not static entities but are regenerated daily through the productive process. Marxism views classes as human social relationships which change over time with historical commonality created through shared productive processes. A 17th century farm laborer who worked for day wages shares a similar relationship to production as an average office worker of the 21st century. In this example, it is the shared structure of wage labor that makes both of these individuals working class. McIver and Page defines social class as any portion of the community marked off from the rest by social status. Max Weber suggests that social classes are aggregates of individuals who have the same opportunities of acquiring goods the same exhibited standard of living. He formulated a three component theory of stratification with social status and party classes or politics as conceptually distinct elements. The three components are number one, social class is based on economic relationship to the market that is the owner, renter, employee, etc. Number two, Status class has to do with non-economic qualities such as education, honor and prestige. And number three, 
party class refers to factors having to do with affiliations in the political domain. According to Weber, a more complex division of labor made the class more heterogeneous. In contrast to simple income property hierarchies and to structural class schemes like Weber's or Marx's, there are theories of class based on other distinctions such as culture or educational attainment. At times, social class can be related to elitism and those in the higher class are usually known as the social elite. For example, Bordeaux seems to have a notion of high and low classes comparable to that of Marxism in so far as their conditions are denied by different habitats which is in turn defined by different objectively classifiable conditions of existence. In fact, one of the principal distinctions Bourdieu makes is a distinction between bourgeoisie taste and the working class taste. Social class is a segment of society with all the members of all ages and both the sexes who share the same general status. MacIver says whenever social intercourse is limited by the consideration of social status, by distinctions between higher and lower, there exists a social class. A social class is essentially a status group. Class is related to st status. Different statuses arise in a society as people do different things, engage in different activities and pursue different vocations. Status in the case of class system is achieved and not ascribed. Birth is not the criterion of status. Achievements of an individual mostly decide his status. Class is almost an universal phenomenon. It occurs in all the modern complex societies of the world. Each social class has its own status in the society. Status is associated with prestige. The relative position of the class in the social setup arises from the degree of prestige attached to the status. A social class is relatively a stable group. A social class is distinguished from other classes by its customary modes of behavior. This is often referred to as the lifestyles of a particular class. It includes mode dress, kind of living, the means of recreation and cultural products one is able to enjoy, the relationship between parent and children. Lifestyles reflect the speciality in preferences, tastes and values of a class. Social classes are open groups. They represent an open social system. An open class system is one in which vertical social mobility is possible. The basis of social classes is mostly economic, but they are not mere economic groups or divisions. Subjective criteria such as class consciousness, class solidarity and class identification on the one hand and the objective criteria such as wealth, income, property, education and occupation on the other hand are equally important in the class system. Class system is associated with class consciousness. It is a sentiment that characterizes the relations of men towards the members of their own and other classes. It consists in the realization of a similarity of attitude and behavior with members of other classes. Let us now understand the concept of class in relation to gender. The concept of class is central to both Marxist and non-Marxist sociological theory. Class is generally explained within two major approaches. The first explains class as composed of strata which are clearly identifiable and social inequalities are based on these social entities which manifests into hierarchies. The hierarchies correspond to the access to unequal life chances that one group is capable of achieving. The second view while not denying the above position also assumes that class development depends 
on occupational structure belonging to a certain class is determined by the occupational structure and placement and the degree to which that class exercises control over others work let me briefly recapitulate the concepts of gender caste and class south asian countries have a terrible record in gender inequality reflected in unusual morbidity and mortality rates of women at the same time belonging to a privileged class can help women to overcome barriers that obstruct women from less thriving classes gender is certainly an additional contributor to societal inequality similarly turning to caste even though being lower caste is undoubtedly a separate cause of disparity its impact is greater when the lower caste families also happen to be very poor caste is based on a ritualized purity with the brahmana on top and the untouchables or the low caste at the bottom of the hierarchy class is based on political and economic status with landlords at the top and landless laborers at the bottom representing a unique form of inequality that is perpetuated by caste in an assessment of the contemporary state of the gender caste overlap deshpande suggests that the economic condition of women continues to be defined and constrained by their caste status the practice of endogamy and other mechanisms exercising controls over women's labor and sexuality intersect with caste and gender inequalities lower caste women have much more autonomy to seek gainful employment outside their homes in comparison to their upper caste counterparts but they are not better off as they belong to a group that is materially at the bottom of the ladder the caste system commonly acknowledged as a hindu phenomena of the subcontinent continued to have its impact on the socio economic and socio political relations for centuries in fact it is the religious aspect brahmanical hinduism which gives it legitimacy and realization in india that the caste system has a religious sanction in india is a significant factor it acts as an agent through which the mechanisms for the subordination of women are constructed the existence nature and prevalence of the caste system are themselves matters of much debate the upper classes insulated from the effects of caste based discrimination tend to believe that the caste system is a part of india's antiquated past an age old system that no longer has relevance invisibility of caste is a fallacy the caste system is very much part of modern indian society and politics its interactions with gender religion and other variables make it a defining factor in many social and economic processes its effect on these processes must be considered in any accurate analysis of the indian polity dalit communities scheduled castes who are 15% of the population and scheduled tribes who are 70% of the population are the largest and most well known lower caste groups in india today historically discriminated against studies show that poverty rates among these groups are still markedly higher than those among other groups however the position of women within these groups is worth noting dalit communities have only marginally lower gross enrollment ratios for girls than the national population there is only a negligible gap between gross enrollment ratios for boys and girls unlike other sections of the population where the gap is pronounced women within these groups also have higher labor force participation rates thus women are less likely to be involved exclusively in domestic duties though their employment is concentrated in casual labor 
the higher economic productivity of women in these communities must be further researched to fully understand its implications on their status within the community this is important especially to see if it results in furthering their decision making ability within the family and the community studies of intra community and household processes in these communities are also lacking making it hard to quantify any assessment of their economic and social status given that caste is not just an economic variable economic development alone will not erase caste based discrimination reservations have been introduced in government jobs colleges and universities it is thought that men have gained more from these reservations than women but the lack of gender disaggregated data makes such an assertion difficult so castes are nothing but classes which in course of time have congealed into castes as western education modern industries technological development urbanization secular and democratic culture extend their influence the strain stranglehold of castes will also loosen the caste inequalities will die of their own accord let us now see the relationship between caste class and gender as an evidence of change m n shrinivas describes caste as a hereditary endogamous usually localized group having a traditional association with an occupation and a particular position in the local hierarchy of castes relations between castes are governed by the concepts of pollution and purity and generally maximum commensality occurs within the caste the complexity of caste is further compounded when jati and varna systems are both described as caste in english the varna system is the ancient system of hereditary having endogamous hierarchical groups brahmans or the priest and teachers kshatriyas or the warriors and royalty vaishyas or the traders and businessmen and shudras and ati shudras who used to do all manual jobs the jati system developed in line with the varna system but they are not the same it is a much more complex occupational structure which contains more rules of living depending on place and context nonetheless jati and varna are still important variables in india jati is more than a group or network of intermarrying descent groups either compactly or sparsely distributing but infrequently straddling linguistic frontiers currently there are about 2000 to 3000 jatis in existence in india and arranging them in a linear structure for the definition of caste inequality is a daunting task besides the fluid nature of the varna system over time complicates this further on the other hand class is an economic concept classes are not communities but exist where people share a specific component of their life chances especially as determined by their economic position class in particular plays a very important role in the creation of social inequality and it can make the influence of other sources of disparity such as gender much sharper in fact the relationship between caste class and gender in indian society cannot be understood outside a consideration of their mutual impact they are intertwined and interlinked creating a reinforcing inequality according to sen class does not act alone in creating and reinforcing inequality and yet no other source of inequality is fully independent of class let us now discuss classification of classes sociologists have given threefold classification of classes which consists of upper class middle class and lower class sorokin has spoken 
of three major types of class stratification. They are economic, political and occupational classes. Lloyd Warner shows how class distinctions contribute to social stability. Wevelin analyzed the consumption pattern of the rich class by the concept of conspicuous consumption. Warner has classified classes into six types, upper upper class, upper middle class, upper lower class, lower upper class, the lower middle class and lower class. Anthony Giddens three class model is the upper middle and lower or working class. Let us now discuss the class stratification in tribal society. Dr. Verrier Elvin divides the tribes in India into four classes according to their stage of cultural development. Class 1 is the purest of the pure tribal groups comprising about 2 or 3 million persons. This class of tribal group maintains their traditions and tribal organization. Geographical conditions have largely protected them from debasing contacts of the plains. Class 2. This group, though retaining their tribal mode of life, exhibits the following characteristics in contrast to the first group. The first characteristic is, instead of a communal life, this group lives a village life which has become individualistic. Their communal life and traditions are only preserved through their village dormitories. The second type is in contrast to class 1 tribes, the members of those of class 2 do not share things with one another. Eggs cultivation has ceased to be a way of life for them. The members of these tribes are more contaminated by the life outside. They come in contact with groups living on the periphery who live a more complex namely civilized life and the fifth category is the members of these tribes are less simple and less honest than the members of the tribes belonging to class 1. Let us come to class 3 tribes. The tribes belonging to class 3 constitutes the largest section of the total tribal population. Members of this class of tribal groups are in a peculiar state of transition. These tribes have been exposed to the influences of economic and socio-cultural factors. A large section of this population was reduced to the status of bonded slaves or serfs of moneylenders, zamindars and contractors who entered Indian society as a result of the political and economic policies pursued by the British. Another section was reduced to the category of near slave laborers working on plantations, in mines, on railway stations and road constructions and other enterprises. The class 4 tribals, who is a very small minority, consist of the old aristocracy of the country represented today by Great Bhil and Naga chieftains, the Gond Rajas, a few Binishwar and Bhuya landlords, Korku non Lemen wealthy Santhal and Urao leaders and some highly cultured Mundas. They retain the old tribal names and their clan and totem rules and observe elements of tribal religion, though they generally adopt the full Hindu faith and live in modern and even European style. According to Elvin, tribals of this class have won the battle of culture contacts. It means they have acquired aristocratic traditions, economic stability, affluence outside encouragement, a certain arrogance and self-confidence characteristic alike of ancient families and modern enterprise. Ghuria has divided the tribes into three classes. The first class is such sections of them like Rajgons and others who have successfully fought the battle and are recognized as members of fairly high status within Hindu society. Secondly, the large mass that has been partially Hinduized 
has come in closer contact with Hindus. Thirdly, the hill sections which have exhibited the greatest power of resistance to the alien cultures that have pressed upon their border. The study of the classification of the tribal population has also indicated another fact that even among the tribal population a peculiar type of stratification has been progressing. On the one hand, a small privileged property owning educated section has been emerging. On the other hand, the vast bulk of the tribals are being hurled into the ranks of the lowest toiling, exploited classes of contemporary Indian society. This stratification has crucial significance. The vocal, richer, privileged minority will inevitably utilize the benefits bestowed on the tribals in the form of special concessions in their game for power. They will launch programs and movements in the name of the entire tribal people which in reality serve only their own interests. In this session, I discuss the meaning of gender, class, caste and stratification. We have seen how gender stratification takes place in tribal societies and how class stratification exists among tribal society. Though it may seem that among tribals there is no stratification and the society is egalitarian, class stratification exists among the tribals. Thank you.